Good morning everybody, welcome back to Heavy Handmade. Um, so today I'm going to do a bit of a get ready with me and also go through some tips regarding things that could help you or it's advice towards helping with chronic fatigue syndrome um, and ME, fibromyalgia and also chronic pain. Uh, I hope you find it interesting anyway and we'll get into the video. I'm just going to put my contacts in and I'll see you in a minute. Right, that's my contacts in and my hair's in the way so let's put this all over and get my hair out the way. Oh, beautiful. See, I bought this from B&M and then I've taken it in because it was way too big for my head so I've had to sew it so it actually fits my head now so that's all good but yes I, I have written down my tips so if I look this way it's because I put my piece of paper there otherwise I'd forget um, I'm sorry if the light keeps changing at all um, I literally shoved you in the window because I felt that that would probably give me the best light and it is absolutely tipping it outside so we shall see what happens stop trying to keep up with other people what I mean by this is that you are not like other people if you suffer with any of the um, anything like chronic fatigue syndrome fibromyalgia uh, and chronic pain things like that you're gonna find that you are a lot slower than other people and that's not a bad thing but it's a bad thing when you try and keep up with other people that are able to continue to what's the word <laughs> i wrote things down probably should have scripted myself but other people don't always understand that you can't go as fast as them so by going trying to keep up with them you are making yourself worse you are going to end up with more bad days than good days and you're going to fall into that cycle boom and crash or something like that you will literally feel oh i'm, I'm fantastic today i keep up i'll do everything i possibly want um, and then what happens from there is you do everything with other people keep up with them and the next day you're out you're out for the count, you, nothing's going to change, you cannot do anything. One of the worst things, I found something online that adds to what fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome is like. Um, so it's actually more functionally disabling than heart disease, multiple sclerosis, kidney failure and other serious illnesses. Um, and that is because it takes everything out of you and I mean everything so yes to you I may not look like I've got a disability I mean today I'm not looking too bad on camera but I haven't slept all night cat didn't want to come home Sam she uh caused us some bad night little madam I should have really sorted my skincare out for Right, like your toner. So I'm going to start with my cleansing lotion. I know I should probably get like actual like cleanser, but I don't like to do that um, too much at the moment. I find that the more I do it, the more dry my skin gets. So it's it's an odd one. I've got quite combination skin. Like I'm really oily in my you know t-zone and i do get it quite under my eyes and around my nose and all that but then at the same time i get really dry skin and it's it's annoying all right let's just cleanse my skin all right let's just let that soak in so number two, uh, pace yourself. So as I mentioned before, um, keeping up with other people is not great. But also if you're having a good day and you decide, oh, fantastic, I can do anything today, I'm feeling great. And then you go and get yourself stuck into a 10 ton of housework, um, not stop because you feel that, if oh, if I do all this now, then if I have a bad day tomorrow, that's fine because I've done everything. Well, no, that's 
that's counterproductive. What's the point if you're just going to crash again? It is so easily done. I mean, I say this and obviously you have days of guilt and you're just going, oh, I feel great. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you start and then you realise there's instant regret because you're already crashing. The best thing to do and what I've been trying to put in my everyday life is to do maybe one or two activities, depending on how long they are, maybe like, if they're like a 10 minute thing, do the 10 minutes and then I'll rest for 10 minutes. Or I'll do something for an hour and then I'll rest for an hour. Otherwise, without that rest, that's it. No, I'm not gonna get through the rest of the day. I'm gonna end up asleep all day and completely crash and I'll feel awful. It is one of the worst feelings I think that I've ever sort of you ever have yeah it is horrible so pacing yourself is a fantastic thing um but oh good I did say what I wrote I put do one activity um at a time and rest in between if you have any pain related symptoms to your um CFSME uh, fibromyalgia and if you have chronic pain, I would highly recommend that you contact your doctor and ask to be referred to a pain specialist team. Uh, they, there should be some in your local areas. I mean, we've got, I think, our NHS one has been taken over by, I think it's Connect Health, which they do have some videos on YouTube. So I didn't get along with the videos because it's like a 3D video and you have to turn it round and you can't always hear what they're saying. I can't, if you put subtitles on, I can't read that fast enough to hear what's happening. So it's, for me, it wasn't great, but all the handouts that they sent me, they have been fantastic. When you go for a pain management team, they are brilliant in the sense that they will go through all sorts of different things, different exercises including breathing exercises that may help. There's also things like... What was that? Oh yeah, they can also review your medication and there's some things that doctors like your GP aren't actually able to um, be able to prescribe you but the pain management team, because they are specialists, specialists in that area, they will be able to tell you what they recommend and they will go through any side effects anything like that they they are very clearly so that that's how i they've been with me let's get on to matona if you use opioids uh, like morphine try to use that sparingly there are some situations and i've got a few people i know that take morphine and the problem with taking morphine at least for me it is a case of you can start off on a small little dose then your body starts getting used to that dose and because it and then all of a sudden you're no you're um you're in more pain because your body got used to that dose so then you have to take more and more and that's how it continues so it can work brilliantly in some situations for short time use things like that but it is also quite, it can be quite harmful it's one of those things if you really are struggling and you are in a lot of pain especially if you speak to a pain management team they will probably suggest that after you've been through quite a few different things i'm currently coming off of my amitriptyline and and fluoxetine for my pain at the moment and being slowly moved on to duloxetine which is basically amitriptyline and fluoxetine in one tablet. I don't want to have so many tablets. I don't want to be taking that many medications if I can help it. You know, I want, I've been trying, trying other treatments like Jigong and sort of meditation breathing exercises which is some tips I'll get to soon that's that's just for me that's a personal thing just because for me i don't want to do something or i don't feel that that's good right now for me doesn't mean that that's not something that you should shouldn't should or shouldn't have if you have tried everything and it's not working and you are offered 
morphine just make sure that you have researched it and you have given yourself a well-informed choice regarding it because if that works for you brilliant i'm not judging anybody if at the end of the day who wants to be in pain 24 7 because that is generally for me especially i am constantly in pain i mean obviously it's worse when i'm tired when i'm stressed and when my mental health's all over the place which is quite frequently at the moment but that's just how that one that one is do not do aggressive workouts so I mentioned this in my last video. Yeah, if you do exercise that overstimulates your body, uh, you are gonna find maybe for the first 10, 20 minutes after you've exercised that you feel that that adrenaline's gone into your body, you feel great, and then you're gonna crash. And then the next day, it's gonna go downhill. You are going to have a horrible day. If you want to exercise, fine. But there's different ways you can do it, whether that's just going for a 10 minute walk, just going up the road and back, and then have coming back having a rest. You don't have to do a massive exercise regime just to feel like you've done something because it's counterproductive again. So I wouldn't advise you doing that. What is my neck? Oh, my blemish stick. I love this little thing. one of the most difficult tips trying to avoid sleep in the day easier said than done I know that I mean today I there's no way I'm gonna get through the day without sleep thank you Demi it's your fault they say if you can uh, try and avoid it as, at all costs so that you can sleep well at night but if you haven't slept at all at night and you finally get to sleep and it's the daytime yeah I'm not going to tell you to stop doing that. I am in no position to be telling you that. Uh, the past week or two, I've I've been sleeping uh, two, three times a day. At night, I've been sleeping, but I've been it's been interrupted sleep, usually because my cat, um, say my cat, Zelda wants to be fussed in the night constantly or be fed treats, you know, the usual. Or this one likes to wake you up screaming. It's all fun. Where was I? However, if you do have a good night's sleep and you're feeling tired in the day, you you can easily rest your eyes without going to sleep. Maybe do it for about 20 minutes or so. Set yourself an alarm just to sit there because that's restorative rest without you going to sleep. So that should help you quite a lot, I hope. It's, it's one of those things, unfortunately, you, you have to do what your body's telling you to. Sometimes you do have to fight it just a little bit, but it is it is a difficult one. As I said, if, if you have had the most awful night's sleep and you cannot get through, I know I've been suggested in the groups maybe at maximum 45 minutes to sleep and make sure you set an alarm. If you are that tired, you are not going to get to a point of setting an alarm. You're probably just going to crash. You're probably just going to go out. And I find that I end up asleep for two, three hours in the daytime. Ask for help when you need it. Don't ever go through... If you're having a difficult time with it, don't suffer on your own. You know, if you are living on your own and you've got friends you can speak to, or family close by or even if you just need some advice from a doctor and have a phone call from them there's always somebody around to help and if not there are local charities I believe that you can talk to especially mental health ones um, and all sorts but don't suffer in silence because it is one of the worst things and we all need help some days i mean i'm lucky enough luke bless him he does when i'm on my bad days and can't move he he's he's my carer so he will go to the shops for me he will bring me my food drinks you know medication if i need to and i'm lucky in that aspect but not everybody has that if you know somebody if you're watching this from a place of somebody that's curious about it and knows somebody but doesn't understand it offer them help 
you know, unfortunately, it's it most of the time we feel like we're a burden on everybody, and we get upset because we feel guilty that why should you have to always, you know, why should our friends and family always have to be the ones to help us, and why can't we do that for ourselves? But sometimes it's just impossible to do that. It. It's just how that sort of goes. Let me put on my cream. Try breathing exercises and meditation. So that could simply be that you just either sit or lay down for a little while and just close your eyes and just concentrate on your breathing. Just breathing in and out and just take them as slow deep breaths and that in itself can actually help you with some of your energy to help you restore it. Other ways as well is maybe looking at a meditation apps um, on your phone, things like Headspace, Calm, because they have some really good ones. They also have some good ones for sleep. If not, there's another app I use, especially at night sometimes called Sleeper and that one's just sort of nature sounds you can set up to the sounds that you find relaxing there's quite a lot on there and they and that will play through the night and sort of relax you and that's obviously more when you're sleeping um i've got i think it's like wind and rain sounds i've got which oh nothing nothing better i find them so soothing but yeah so just even just taking 10 minutes out of your day, 10, 20 minutes, just sit there, lay there, close your eyes, take a deep breath in, deep breath out, and just focus on your breathing and just do that for a little while. Um, and it's the same for meditation. If you did decide to go through it uh, on guided meditations and you you focus in onto your breathing um, and all sorts, and you can find meditations to suit your needs so whether it's for sleep and um, stress to help with pain and um, just to help with relaxation relaxate relaxing Re we're all good and um it's just really i find it quite peaceful but at the same time i find that meditation for some strange reason every time i do it I come out bawling my eyes out and I just don't understand why <laughs> I'm that relaxed that I just cry. So I don't do it as often as I used to, mainly because I don't want to cry. <laughs> um, but I know that and sometimes that's, they say that's a good thing. You, if you cry during it, then it's actually quite helpful and therapeutic. This is a tip that I did not get along well with at all during winter months and I, I will not do it during winter. If you want to, go ahead, that is fine. I know a lot of people that have done this um, when I was going to my chronic fatigue groups and things like that, that it was a tip that was mentioned quite a lot. During summer, more than happy to do this tip. Winter, not happening, nope. No, I tried it and I, I did not like it. What it is, is in a shower, in your mornings, routines, if you shower in the mornings, um, I mean, to be fair, I usually shower at night unless it's really hot. But having a quick blast of freezing cold water on you. So that's basically having a lovely warm shower and then just quickly turn it right down to the cold setting and freeze yourself for a couple of seconds or sometimes a minute some people are done and then turn it back to what it was. That is supposed to open up your energy levels somewhere, make you find the energy for that day. No, didn't get along with, but as I said, it did work for other people. So I thought it was a tip sort of mentioning because obviously what works for one may not work for another and um, you know vice versa so i would <laughs> for me i recommend it in the summer 
I don't mind that. I mean, I don't have a shower now, I have a baths, but having a cold bath, or even in the morning, if you just fill the sink up with cold water and literally just dunk your head in, that's supposed to do the same. And I mean, it cools you off for a little bit until the beautiful British weather where it becomes so humid that you can't walk without sweating off your entire body. There is a exercise um, that I was taught during my group, which is called Jigong, which I will put I'll put it on the screen how it's spelled. A brief description. A Chinese system of physical exercises and breathing control related to Tai Chi. To me, reading that statement sounds like it's mass physical exercise, but then you think Tai Chi is not about high mood, high energy. It is slow and it's focusing more on the strength than it is a battle, if that makes any sense I have no idea so I'm sorry if it doesn't but it's things where you, yeah you focus on your breathing um, and also it's things like you tap into your inner energy so thing it's like your energy reserves that your body's sort of stored and it's things like having your arms out and just like tapping up and down and you'll find after a while that your arm will buzz a little bit and that's like your inner energy and it's supposed to keep you feeling a little bit more awake and coming around and I mean I did actually find it quite helpful I haven't done it much since my group finished and I think I'm gonna try and once, once we've got a little bit more settled here and got a few more things put away I think then we I might we I might try and get back into doing some of that now there is a lot of, is there a lot? There are some YouTubers that um, do Jigong and I will try and find as many as I can. Well, with, I say as many as I can, I'll try and find the, like a good two or three different people that do Jigong and I'll link them in the description if you want to have a look. Um, and I'm more than happy at some point to do a little bit of Jigong on like record it for you if you wanted to give it a try yourself but it is it is very relaxing anyway um, and I do recommend having a look into it it might be something that you like if you don't you don't like it that's absolutely fine um, do what you feel is best for you anyway I really hope you enjoyed this video please remember to like and subscribe and leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's anything else you'd like to know. Um, if I don't know the question, I'm, I will more than happily try and look and try and find out for you. But yes, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.